Alright, hello people, I'm the dude and this is going to be my rant review of the Saw series. More importantly, the philosophy behind the Saw series. But I will be talking about the movies as well. Keep in mind, I'm not a philosophy major. <laughs> this is just some random guy's point of view. Uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, okay, so the idea behind the Saw series, the, at, at its core, is that a life without meaning has no purpose. It shouldn't exist. Basically, if, if you can't justify your existence, you shouldn't have one. <laughs> uh, the counter argument to that is nihilism, that there is no meaning to life. There is no meaning to our existence, which means it's impossible to justify it. <laughs> uh, both arguments could be argued until the end of time. Uh, they both, at the very least, seem like valid arguments, depending on how you look at it, depending on your point of view. Uh, the Saw series starts out with that one message and it kind of branches out from there into uh you know like the individual individual versus the community uh you know sacrificing yourself for others or not so much <laughs> uh sacrificing others you know uh, well-being for yourself selfishness uh what else vices how vices can destroy your life how you can be consumed by them uh lots of basic themes but they go to extremes in the saw series <laughs> Obviously, they take it to the far extreme, as far as they can. Uh, again, I, it's hard to justify any of these, any of these arguments, because there's always a counter-argument, you know I mean? You could argue that fighting for yourself may be the only way to truly survive in certain situations, you know? Uh, but then you could also argue that if you only fight for yourself, and you don't contribute anything to anyone else, then what's the point? I mean, uh, survival in and of itself isn't enough. I guess, for some people. Uh, and then vices can consume you, obviously, but also vices can be an escape from what can be a very mundane existence for a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a counter-argument to everything put forth in the Saw series. Straight up. So, I'm gonna go into my personal opinion of each of the movies, and then my personal opinion on the philosophy behind it. Uh, which side of the scale I fall on. Uh, the first movie is probably the best... If not the best, it's one of the best in the series. Uh, it has the best twist. It has probably the best... I can't say it's the best moral conundrum. Because there's been some really good ones. But uh, it has one of the best. And uh, the players all have very significant roles. You know, there's not just this random guy that shows up one time and has nothing else to do. He's not interconnected with the plot at all. Which happens later in the Saw series. They all have their purpose in that first movie. They're all connected together. Through this web of intrigue and lies and, you know, uh, just terrible, terrible decisions. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is probably the best. Plus, it introduces us to the actual Jigsaw Killer at the very end, which is uh, probably the best scene in that movie. Uh, when he, he sits up and he's actually been on the floor the whole time. Spoilers, big spoilers. Hopefully people have seen the Saw series by now. But, uh, big spoilers. The guy laying in a pool of his own blood in the middle of the, the floor, he's not actually dead. It's Jigsaw. And when he stands up and slams the door and leaves the guy to die, one of the worst deaths in this, the, the, the Saw series, make no mistake, there's a lot more gruesome deaths, but they're quick. They're over in a flash. This guy has to sit there and starve to death. <laughs> or, well, die of dehydration, actually. That would come first. But, uh... And in darkness. You know, alone with his own thoughts about he, how his, his existence is completely hopeless at this point. <laughs> He has no way to survive. He, he's going to die, and he has to uh, struggle with that. And the worst part is, he didn't really deserve that. There's a lot of people in this series that deserve that kind of torture. They don't get it. This, this random guy that takes photographs does. <laughs> uh, yes, his photographs were more than just photographs. They affected other people. That was the point of his character, but much, much worse. Uh, people have done much worse in the series, by far. <laughs> they are much more terrible human beings. But, uh, yeah, the first one, really good. Uh, the second one, the more I watch it, the more I've seen it over time, the less I like it. Uh, there's too much going on. And most of it is its, is its own thing. It's not all, like the first one was, interconnected together. The later ones have this exact same problem, but this one started that trend. Uh, they all have a common theme that, uh, their excesses or whatever, you know, they've given into in their life has caused, uh, you know problems for them or their family or others and they're all paying for it basically uh and the uh, the father the one who's trying to rescue his son is uh he's caused at the very least he's helped 
uh, create their problems. He hasn't he hasn't done anything to save them. You know, <laughs> he's been contributing to it. He hasn't done anything to help them. So, you know, the moral I guess there it it sound it makes sense, but at the end of the day, it's just it's it's like about this guy and then it's about that guy and it's about her and it's about him and they're all over the place. You know, there was no cohesive uh, thread going through all of it, keeping it all together. It was too spread out, and uh, the ending. It was one of those, you know, surprise endings like the Saw series is great at, but it wasn't one of the better ones, uh, honestly. It was just, he gets caught, he gets thrown in the room, and then the safe opens, and voila, his son's there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can... I don't know. I don't know about the second one. I don't know what to say. It's just, from my personal point of view, I don't like it as much as the first time I saw it, or the second time I saw it, or the third time I saw it. It's, it's gotten worse over time. Uh, the third Saw movie... It's all about vengeance. It's all about him being consumed by one particular vice or, you know, uh, what, what, whatever the hell you want to call it, one sin. He's been consumed by one sin. His whole existence has been consumed by it. And uh, he has to let it go. The problem with that is, it's not that easy. It's also another running theme throughout the Saw series that people are very difficult to fix. At, at his core, Jigsaw wants to help people. I mean, he, he goes about it in a really terrible way, obviously, but he wants to help people, or at least most people. The guy who uh, caused his child's death, obviously he wasn't going out of his way to help that guy. He probably wanted him to die, but most of the people that he, you know, sets about to torture, and that's what he's doing, is for their own good. In the third movie... <sighs> It's hard to justify, or at the very least, it's much harder to justify what he does to the guy. Uh, it's also harder to justify why he, he deserved, out of all the people in the world, to be tested. That's what he calls it, testing them. Uh, being consumed by vengeance, yeah, it was ruining his life, but he wasn't killing people. He wasn't, you know, causing deaths or raping or, or you know, devastating families or, you know, like people later in the series... I mean, his his problem only really affected him and his own family. You know, I mean, uh, it, it devastated them, but <laughs> you killing his family, which is what Jigsaw does, isn't really helping solve the problem. You know, I mean, if you'd have left them alone, yeah, they'd have been unhappy, but they'd have been alive. They'd have been better off. So I don't, I don't know if you can justify the third movie as easily as the other ones. Assuming you can justify any of them, but... The, uh, the third movie, I didn't dislike it. I liked the, uh, I liked the ending more than most people did, where he chose the path of vengeance. He, he chose not, even though he said he forgave him, he still killed him, which, you know, it's, it's a misnomer. He didn't actually, if he had forgiven him, there'd been no reason to kill him. So, it, what he said wasn't actually the truth. But, uh, he, he pays for it. He paid for it in spades. Uh, his wife killed, his daughter locked in some hole somewhere, and the only, uh, the only key to her salvation, he just murdered. So, it it was very poignant, whatever you want to call it, the ending to Saw 3. The movie itself was alright, and the, the, the reasoning behind it was probably one of the most flawed, but the ending was pretty damn good. Or at least, I liked it quite a bit. Uh, Saw 4 was probably my least favorite in the series, where Riggs is targeted, the, uh, the SWAT officer, and hopefully I'm not getting him out of order. I don't think I am. Is it four or five? Uh, okay, so the one where Riggs is targeted, I'm just going to assume it's four. It's either four or five. Uh, easily my least favorite. The uh, the traps aren't as interesting. Just like the basics of, the, of the, the film aren't as interesting as the other ones. But also the uh, philosophy behind it, that uh, it's, it's again, it's obsession. Be this In this case, being obsessed with saving others. Uh, trying, trying to uh, save others in certain situations is impossible. Uh, you know, you have to save yourself first, that kind of thing, that, that kind of uh, mindset. I just didn't like it at all. And I don't think it was uh, played out very well either. Especially the, the ending scene, him showing up early and he wasn't supposed to and all this. At that point, he hadn't learned. You know, he, had, he hadn't had the chance to, to learn the lesson. You know I mean? He'd been, given, he'd been given tests, but I didn't think they were effective. <laughs> and then, uh, of course he was gonna run in the room at the end. I mean, come on, it, it was... So, anyways, plus, 
it was also the the easiest uh, the easiest reasoning, whatever you want to call it, to punch holes in that uh, you know sacrificing yourself to you know slowly sacrificing yourself to help others, you know, k killing yourself, uh, damaging your whatever personality. What I don't know how to phrase this correctly. Uh, Giving too much of yourself to help others, that kind of thing, is uh, is damaging, is an exercise in futility. I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know how to justify that one, honestly. If that's what someone wants to do, and uh, you know, in this case, be obsessed with, then there could be much worse things. That's what I'm trying to get at. There, uh, there could be much worse things to be obsessed about. And uh, in his case, his it wasn't his obsession. That was hurting others. It was hurting himself. So Jigsaw tested him against all these different people who all end up dead just so he could help, just so in theory Riggs could help himself. I mean, yes, technically it affected his wife, but she was fine. You know, it's not like she was uh, in danger or anything. I mean, at worst, she would have left him and found a guy that treats her better. <laughs> there was no real justifiable reason behind the fourth movie. Honestly, or at least I didn't see it. Uh, the fifth movie has, by far, in a way, the best ending. By far, in a way, the best ending. Uh, I don't think many people would disagree with that at this point. The uh, the glass coffin trap. He uh, he he was supposed to be the one in the coffin, but uh, uh, what's his name? The, the third Jigsaw, Jigsaw accomplice, the, the guy that used to be a cop, I can't remember his name right now, as far as in the movie goes, but he ends up in the coffin, and then Strom gets squished by the walls. Oh, that, by far, by far and away, the, the be one of the best traps, and definitely the best ending. Uh, it, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's a surprise. What's gonna happen? And once he's uh, in the coffin and the, the walls start closing, oh, it's painful. But uh, beyond that, People hate the fifth one because of the, uh, I, I think it's just, it's too, it's too gruesome or it's, uh, it has less of, um, moral behind it than the other ones do. I mean, there is a moral in five. It's that, uh, the individual is less important than the community or put others before yourself or, you know, however you want to phrase it. And, uh, I think it's much more justifiable to consider that a reason to put people in traps that they're just straight up selfish than it is for, you know, what was in the fourth movie or in the third movie, where really all they're doing is affecting themselves. These people are sacrificing everyone else around them, uh, you know, for their betterment, basically. So I'd say, I'd say the people in the fifth movie were very easily justified. Uh, it's very easily justifiable why they were there. Whereas the third and the fourth movie, yeah, I don't know, not so much. Uh, but yeah, it also had some of my favorite traps overall. The neck trap, where... They're, they're hooked into these wires, and if they can't get to the keys, they get sucked back into the trap. Uh, it cuts right to the heart of that particular, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it, problem uh, with humanity. That people are selfish, inherently. People are selfish. Given the chance, you know, they'll, they'll throw the guy next to him to the lions and, uh, you know, make a break for themselves, you know? It, it, that, that one trap summed it up right there, that, that very first trap. Uh, the ones after that weren't quite as good, but, you know, that one trap and then the one at the end with the glass coffin was really, really amazing. Uh, the sixth movie. <sighs> the sixth movie, it's supposed to be, like, a return to the, 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 the philosophy of the earlier movies. Uh, I didn't like it. At all. In any way. Uh, <laughs> the, the overarching theme is that, you know, big business is bad. Who knew? You know, or uh, uh, that that people in uh, will do whatever it takes to you know climb the the uh, climb the ladder of success, that kind of thing. In this case, he's an insurance exec, and he literally decides whether or not people's claims are accepted or not. At the end of the day, it can be very easily argued that insurance companies eventually have to cut someone off. Right, they can't they can't fundamentally be po uh, profitable if they pay for every single claim that comes in, especially to the point where 
I mean, at, at that point, everyone would be claiming everything. Literally. They'd, they'd be sending in claims for the most ridiculous stuff ever. And if they accepted everything, they literally would go out of business. So they have to, they have to draw a line. You know, the company itself has to be profitable so it can help the other people. Right? <laughs> so there is a counter-argument to that, to that movie. And I would argue that it's pretty justifiable. In the case of the, the movie itself, uh, probably not. Like, the guy that, uh, th he got screwed on a, a technicality, you know, he's literally going to die without this help. And because he didn't fill out one piece of paper or something like that, he's, he's condemned, to, condemned to death. Obviously, that's a very extreme and obvious, uh, <laughs> you know, example of what shouldn't be. But the, the idea behind it, it's very easy to punch holes in it, you know? Uh, every business has to be profitable. They can't be throwing away money on everything. They can't... I mean, they, they literally wouldn't uh, be in business at that point. So, yeah. Plus, the uh, traps really weren't that good. Uh, the one where she has to crawl through the maze and she's getting burned by, you know, gas or... or I mean, like, heat... Uh, I think it's, like, hot water or whatever the hell it was. Something that's hot. Some kind of vapor that's hot. Very uninteresting. Uh... The trap where they're like standing on the, the they've got like nooses around the neck and they're standing on the edges or whatever, and he has to hold on to them. Very uninteresting. Uh, I mean, it serves the purpose of the the film that uh, now he has to literally choose who lives and dies, you know, directly in front of him and see the uh, the cost that's involved. I mean, it made sense for the film, but as far as what the Saw series, you know, makes money on the the how how uh, you know just particularly nasty and inventive and uh, clever the traps are, they, they really weren't that great in uh, Saw 6. They were pretty bad. Uh, and then uh, the ending was probably the worst. It's probably my least favorite in the Saw series, Saw 6, where uh, the family of his victim, the guy I was talking about earlier, that uh, he didn't file his claim, he didn't accept his claim, and you know he died of some kind of illness. I don't remember what it was. Uh, the family has his lives in their hands, and all they have to do is flip a switch, and he, he dies. Uh, at that point, whether or not he had learned anything was irrelevant. You see what I'm saying? Up to this point in all the Saw movies, right, it's usually about one person learning a lesson. Usually there's a whole bunch of people involved in traps, and they're all learning their own individual lesson, but the core of the movie, depending on which one you pick, the different person... It's all about one individual going through a progression of, of learning, of experience, of education, of whatever you want to call it. In this case, no matter what he learned throughout the movie, he was going to die at the end because it was out of his hands. And he could argue, like the movie does, that it wasn't his test, that it was the family's test, but they hadn't learned anything either because they didn't go through the, the, the progression that he did. They just sat in a cell the whole movie. So it, it, regardless of how you look at it, one person was there to learn something, and then had no, it had no impact on the ending, and the other people didn't learn anything at all. All they had to do was flip a switch and someone dies. So it really broke with the formula of Jigsaw and the series itself, and I just, I didn't like it. It had, it had no, uh, continuity with the rest of the series. So yeah, it just, it didn't make any sense. Uh, Saw 3D was... <laughs> uh, it's the most recent one I've seen. I actually didn't see it when it came out. It was really stupid. Uh, they tried to bring Jigsaw's wife into the picture, and they gave uh, Jigsaw's accomplice a reason to hunt her down because Jigsaw gave her a test for him, and he got out of the test. He didn't actually die like he was supposed to, and now he's hunting her down or whatever. But again, just like the ending of Six, it breaks with the formula of the rest of the movie. No one is learning anything. You know, no... All, all these torturous deaths, and they're, they're all meaningless now. It's just because, you know? And uh, worst of all, usually when someone dies in this series, they're not innocent. They've, they've done something wrong, and they either, they either refuse to accept it, or, uh, you know, they're, they're still an evil person at their core. You know, there was a reason that they bite it. In, in six, people are dropping left and right that have nothing to do with, you know, the vices of the series. Uh, I mean, in the last few scenes alone, he kills, like, four or five people that just happen to be in his way for the hell of it. I mean, it, it becomes a slasher flick at that point. He's just killing people because. So, again, Saw 3D, it had nothing to do with the rest of the series. And then, uh, the ending of Saw 6 was easily my least favorite. 
So that's my breakdown of the series as a whole. As far as the philosophy behind it, uh, <laughs> we'll start with the core here. Uh, the, the main theme, especially for the first two movies, but it runs throughout the whole series. Uh, purpose. Does your life have purpose? Should your life have purpose? Uh, can any life have purpose? You know, in this particular existence. <laughs> uh, oh, it's really hard to say. I would probably fall closer to the nihilism point of view on here, but I'm not to the extreme. I think that there is justification to help others which means I mean, if fundamentally if there's a reason to better others existence at all if there's a purpose to it at all purpose to it at all then it has there has to be some kind of meaning right <laughs> i mean uh you can spend your whole life helping others and saving them and you know improving their quality of life and making them happy but if life fundamentally itself has no meaning then everything you've done is a waste so i'm not to that far extreme <laughs> i do think that at the end of the day, our species is pretty pointless. I mean, our whole... If you want to get down to it, our real purpose, the meaning of life, is, you know, uh, a snake eating its tail. It's it's an endless stream, you know? It's procreation to create life, life so we can procreate, and, you know, on and on until end of the, you know, infinity or whatever. I mean, uh, we're not really... We're not really doing anything meaningful for the universe. Which, at the end of the day, the universe is bigger than us. All we can ever really hope to affect are the people around us. And the planet itself. But, God knows we haven't... <laughs> we haven't done a good job of that. We've been destroying the place. But, uh... You know, a, a, a good, good person could spend their whole life... You know, with charity or trying to, to, at the very least, ease the burdens of others, and that wouldn't be a wasted life. Again, in theory, with extreme nihilism, it would be wasted because no matter what we do, we're all going to die eventually, and it's just an endless circle, and what's the point? You know I mean? There is no true purpose. But in the moment, you know, in the moment, helping another person matters. Maybe it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, and it doesn't matter at the end of time, assuming time does end at some point, <laughs> but in the moment, it does matter. In the moment, you've, uh, you know, you've affected someone else positively. So, I guess I'm kind of on the fence. I think, you can, I think you can justify both reasonings. I think you can justify that a life that's completely selfish where you have, you know, no, no positive effect on anyone else is pointless. But, I, but at the end of the day, I also think that there is justific justification, in, you know, in the, the, the big scheme of things, on the grand scale, that nihilism is probably correct. <laughs> and I, I fully realize that you can't choose both. I feel I, re I fully realize that they're mutually exclusive. I'm uh, breaking the rules, I guess. <laughs> uh, I don't know if helping someone in the short term can justify ignoring the fact that our species as a whole is probably meaningless. <laughs> but then I also couldn't justify just being a selfish bastard <laughs> my entire life long, never doing any anything for anyone else, so I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, as far as Saw is concerned, do I think it's justifiable to put people in these torture devices in the hopes that pain, in this case psychological and physical, is going to correct their personality flaws? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, this, this series itself, it, we'll go with the series first, and then we'll go with, like, reality, what would probably actually happen. But for the series, it proves, in the long run, that it's not working. Uh, it doesn't work for Amanda. It doesn't work for the cop. Uh, it doesn't work for anyone, really, any of the survivors. Any of the people that survived the, uh, the ordeal. They always come back around to be terrible people. Uh, they, they, they never they never learn their lesson and go off to live a fruitful life or if they do we never hear from them again so as far as the series goes it's probably a, a, a fundamentally terrible idea uh, as far as reality goes I can all but guarantee that it wouldn't work uh, short term pain psychological or physical isn't going to change someone I mean it, sticking someone in a trap and them having to sacrifice some of their self to get out isn't going to instantly change their philosophy, their ideals, what they've lived by 
for as long as however the hell their existence, however long their existence has been at this point, it's not just going to change on a whim. I mean, it, it would take conditioning. It would take a long period of time to change someone fundamentally. You can change them in small ways, but you know you can't break someone's addiction, you know, instantaneously just because you inflict pain on them. Uh, <laughs> It's easy. To, it's easy to prove that that would not work. Fundamentally, it's it's the theory is flawed. Uh, maybe, possibly, the uh, the one person in each movie that is going through the progression that that has to make choices, uh, multiple choices over a series of time. Maybe they possibly could be brought around to your reasoning or whatever because uh, they're interacting. You know, they're not just put in a situation that you are forcing upon them and then they have to survive it. They're, they're making choices. What happens, you know, is uh, in their hands. And that means they have to think about it. They, they have to actually process what's going on around them. So maybe those people could change, possibly. But even then, in my experience, over the short term, and none of them are over the long term, they're always over like maybe a day or so, probably less than that, where they go through these trials... Uh, multiple trials over that amount of time they're probably not going to change not on a fundamental level i mean uh, again you might change them in some small way but not seriously not in any way that matters uh in my experience it takes something devastating and something at the very least something that cannot be recreated to you know fundamentally change someone so i don't know i, I think i think the saw series isn't justifiable, but I also think that it's interesting. It's trying to be more than just a horror movie. It's, you know, it, it, at the very least, they're trying. They're trying, you know? I mean, you, you take any other horror movie, and most of the time, they'll have some kind of overarching theme that may or may not be uh, a parody of something that's happening in real life, but as far as the movie itself goes, it's just slashing and hacking and Blood and gore and bits and, you know, bad things. Uh, every step of the way, for the most part, especially in the earlier Saw movies, they're trying to teach you something. Or they're giving, they're giving, they're giving you the opportunity to learn something. So there is a moral here. Uh, and it's not as ambiguous as it is in a lot of other movies. Uh, it's not blatant either, for the most part. It's not like they start the movie with... Uh, you know, here's what you're going to learn, and then they reiterate it throughout the entire movie. It's usually a little bit more vague than that, uh, a little bit more cryptic, so you can figure it out for yourself. Again, when when you get when you sink your teeth into something, you're more likely to believe it than if you're just told. You know, if 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 you learn it for yourself, you're much more likely to integrate it into your thought process or whatever. So, I don't hate the series. I hate. The, the, fun, the, the last movie, which is hopefully the last one. I don't think they can do anything at this point. I, I think it's it should be over. <laughs> it probably won't be because obviously they can still make money on it. But uh, I, I don't think it's ever going to have any real uh, success on any level other than this is just another slasher flick. So eh, I don't really care about the series at this point. But uh, barring the last one, barring Saw 3D, I didn't hate the series. I liked it quite a bit for the most part. Uh, so much so that I've actually watched all of them multiple times, which I can't say about most series. <laughs> uh, usually it's once over and that's it. Uh, the Saw series, you can go back and you can try to piece things together and, uh, see if there's some hidden meaning behind things. You know, stuff like that. Give it a second chance. Give it a second look. That kind of thing. So, yeah. And I didn't hate the villain either. Jigsaw's very ambiguous. Uh, he's very like master pupil he, he's he's like it's like a teacher student relationship with him and everyone including the audience he's always up here you know on uh some moral high horse and everyone else is down here you know trying to catch up and uh it's entertaining uh th just the fact that he has a personality you know that he has a purpose other than just go kill people you know what i mean just that alone is interesting Okay, so this particular rant has gone on uh, long enough. I'm going to cut out quite a bit of what I just uh, spent probably 10 minutes ranting about because uh, it went off on a tangent. I'm going to try to get back on track here and I'll edit this in to the end of the video. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is talk about the characters themselves, what I thought of them. 
Uh, we'll go over the ones I actually liked first, and it should have been pretty obvious at this point, but I liked Jigsaw's character quite a bit. I liked uh, Danny Glover's character, although he wasn't around long enough. He could have been a really, really good uh, good guy. <laughs> uh, he, uh, I don't know, his obsession was interesting, and they could have done a lot more with it. Uh, Strom's character basically replaced Danny Glover's character. They're very similar, although Danny was more obsessed than Strom was, but they were the same type of character, and for the same reason, I like Strom's character. Although, at least he got that amazing death scene, so that's something. Uh, those are the only real characters I would say were favorites of mine, whatever the hell you want to call it, for this series. Uh, the ones I didn't like, there were quite a few. Uh, all of the accomplices I couldn't stand... Uh, what is his name? Do, do, do. Carrie Elwes, the doctor. His character was fine in the first movie. Uh, I don't think he was accurately portraying what his character was feeling for most of those scenes. I don't think I don't think he did a great job in the first movie, but it wasn't terrible. But bringing him back for Saw 3D was just stupid. It made no sense at all. I uh, had all kinds of problems with it, so overall I can't stand his character. Uh, Amanda... <sighs> Amanda being Jigsaw's nursemaid and then pseudo-replacing him was a terrible idea. Not only is she not Jigsaw, which immediately there has to be a comparison. If you're going to replace one with the other, there has to be a comparison. She's not Jigsaw. She's just a weak personality, period. She wasn't bringing that same intensity that Jigsaw was. Uh, she's just... <laughs> Period. She wasn't as interesting a character as Jigsaw was. So, I hated Amanda's character. They didn't really need to do anything else with her character once she was a junkie, she was in the trap, she made it through, and she learned her lesson, and, you know, whatever. Became a better person, in theory, although that didn't actually happen. <laughs> but, in theory, you know, that could have been the end of her character right there, and it would have been fine. They didn't need to do more with it, but they wanted to get rid of Jigsaw for whatever reason, and you know, king of all terrible decisions, they replaced him with Amanda. Uh, the, the cop, Hoffman, uh, I don't know if he, what, Policeman Hoffman, whatever, whatever the hell his title is, uh, he was even worse than Amanda. Because Amanda was a weak villain, but at least she had motivations, and at least she had personality. Hoffman was just there. He was emotionless. He, he was like clinical about it and there's nothing special about that. You know, it was like he was just going through the motions. Once once Hoffman became the villain, it became all about the storyline and the traps and not about uh, facing off against this mastermind. You know, that, that fell off completely out of the storyline. So yeah, I hated Hoffman. Hated Amanda a little bit less than Hoffman but still hated her. And, uh, and Gordon. I couldn't stand Gordon. Uh, there's a lot of bit characters that I didn't like. Like, I didn't like Riggs' character. He was too one-dimensional. Uh, the, uh, the other agent... What is her name? Uh, agent something or another. The one that's in the trap where it, like, rips open her rib cage. Her character was really boring and added nothing to that movie. Other than her death scene. <laughs> uh, who else? I'm trying to think. The agents slash cops, whatever the hell they were, in Saw 3D, they were terrible. Uh... They weren't giving that counterpoint that you got in the earlier movies in the series to uh, the killer. They were just there. They were just going through the motions. <laughs> they, were, they were literally Hoffman, but instead of it just being the villain, at this point it was the cops and the villain who were uh, boring me to tears. So, a lot of bad characters, but at the end of the day, this series didn't live and die by the characters. It, uh, it was the story. You know, it was the... Uh, the uh, methodology behind everything, so, I don't know. I don't even know what the hell... Uh, it, bottom line, I didn't hate uh, the Saw series. Uh, I think there's plenty of people that love it for the, the the graphic nature of it, and that's fine. Horror movies, that's that's part of horror movies, you know, shock value. And there's a lot of people that just absolutely hate it for the exact same reason, the gore value. Uh, I would say that you're watching the wrong genre. I mean, as much as I, I agree that the best horror movies aren't about gore, the the be the truly greats in the horror genre aren't about gore at all. That is true, but the, the genre itself, gore has a place. Because gore, for a lot of people, is scary. 
and horror movies fundamentally are about scaring people or disturbing them at the very least. So gore has its place. But uh, yeah, anyways, take that for what you will. Long rant about the, sword, the uh, Saw series. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.